halfback named Dorsett, or the pride of a national championship, or the illustrious coaching job by a young John Majors. 20 years after he first came to Pittsburgh, Majors is back, trying to revitalize a tradition-rich program. It hasn't been easy, and it won't get any easier tonight with the team's heart and soul, Curtis Martin out with a shoulder injury. Rutgers' Doug Graber also has designs on moving up in the Big East. His method is offense. Terrell Willis is leading the Lakers as a freshman with 129 yards rushing per game. Bruce Presley, last year's Big East Rookie of the Year, isn't far behind. And a quarterback, a coach's dream. Two who can get the job done, Ray Lucas and Brian Forte, equally praised and equally adept. Tonight, from Giant Stadium, two coaches aiming for the next level, Pitt versus Rutgers. What you're looking at is a live shot of Giant Stadium here at the Meadowlands as the Pitt Panthers take the field in tonight's ball game, Big East style, as they square off against Rutgers. Head coach Johnny Majors in his first year back at the place that he started 20 years ago. Hi, everybody. Ron Franklin along with Craig James, and welcome to CFA football Thursday evening style. And let's start off with the Panthers. A lot of continuity offensively the last couple of weeks. In fact, things were looking much better on that side of the football. And then lo and behold, Curtis Martin, the guy that makes it all go, didn't even make the trip. And I'm really disappointed. I've looked forward to this game all year because of Curtis Martin. What a heart and soul player this guy is for the Panthers. A tough runner, and because of his aggressiveness as an athlete, last week against West Virginia, knocked him out of the game. He'll run the seam route up the middle. The safety's going to come back in. You'll see him catch the football right on the left shoulder, busted him up. He had to leave the ball game. Curtis Martin is very important to this team, rushing and receiving. Look at the number of times he touches the ball offensively, and he's the guy, Ron, that gets them in the end zone. You know, Craig, the thing that makes it tougher to swallow as far as the Pitt coaching staff as well is if this were a Saturday game, he might be at least partially ready to go. But they know it's going to be a short week, and that's what they have to contend with. As far as Rutgers is Kevin Leon will kick it off for Pitt. Dual safety, that's Willis along with Bill Bailey for Rutgers. And we're underway. This is Willis. Breaks it big, one man to beat, and he will be tackled across midfield at the 47-yard line. A 43-yard return. A lot of times when you get a great ball carrier back returning kickoffs, they're concentrating so much, especially as a freshman on that opening series, they don't really pay attention to the running lanes. Look at the wall, the kick out, the blocks, they sealed inside. The great move, well, it's a kicker, so what? But Willis is just an extremely talented individual that gives his team great field position. Brian Forte gets the start at quarterback tonight. He's from East Brunswick, New Jersey, 6'3", 210. And if you follow college football, you all know the story. Started off at Miami and then transferred back to the Northeast, which is home. Running play and Terrell Willis with a huge opening over the right side. Will have eight yards in the play. Close to the 36-yard line as Doug Whaley comes up to make the hit. And here are the starting lineups brought to you by McDonald's. Offensively tonight, well, the guy who we've seen twice already, number 31, Terrell Willis. So, folks, he's only a redshirt freshman, but he has some really high-caliber moves and speed. Wide receivers, better than adequate by uh, no stretch. Chris Brantley, a 4-3 sprinter, and up front, the offensive line. The man that's the bell cow, 77, Scott Vaughn. Very strong at that right tackle spot. 6'6", 305. What a again. Tripped up as he reaches to 31, but that's the initial first down of the night as they will move the change, and Gerald Simpson comes up from his left defensive tackle spot to make the tackle. And here are the starters on defense for Pitt tonight. Tom Bart, number 90, junior out of Mentor, Ohio. Very strong, very aggressive. We'll call his name a lot tonight. And speaking of calling the name a lot, this guy's only a sophomore, but you got to love him. Tom Tumulty. Kind of a throwback. Plays a great middle linebacker. And Doug Whaley, who made the tackle a moment ago, he's the senior leadership, the glue in that secondary. picked off at the 10-yard line. Doug Whaley is the man who was closest to it as Forte rolled the pocket to the left as he got a little pressure from inside. Forte doesn't make a lot of mistakes. We only have one interception on the year for him, but here he's got a little hitch. You'll see Brantley up top. Well, he makes a move back, then takes off deep, but the safety came over in a two deep, and he almost threw the pick on there. Don't 
puts your offense in a negative situation early, let Willis carry you to the end zone. Well, that's that's true, and particularly when you get a 43-yard kick return, and your initial first down takes you to the 31-yard line. From the shotgun. Good protection for the offensive front. It is Brantley across the middle, and Chris will take it to the 25, and now it's going to be a third down, and they'll look for four. Rutgers really a, a good offensive team, and they're trying to show balance right here so that Pitt can stay away from an eight-man front to shut down the running game. But all he did on that play there is he just tried to clear the middle out and give the ball underneath to Brantley, give some confidence to Forte throwing the football, get him warmed up. Brantley, you see the average 11-5, not great, but not poor. The other thing on there are seven touchdown passes. Every time he catches another one, it's not only a career best, it's a school record. Shot down and they go with the run, and Willis is going to be stacked up inside, and it's a nice job defensively as John McCray fills the hole, and now we'll get a look at the field goal unit as Benestad probably is going to be called upon here with the fourth down and three. But I tell you what, if you're Rutgers and you know you've got a great ground game, you go for it, you say, look, Pitt, you're, you're going. not going to beat me. Well, you're exactly right. That's what Doug Graber says as Bill Bailey checks into the lineup, number 21, and they'll go for the first down rather than for the field goal. Six of ten on the season of fourth down conversion. Pitch Willis. He's going to have the first down inside the 20 and down to the 18. David gotta, Sumner, who's getting a start tonight at the strong safety, comes up to make the tackle. You got a stud like Willis, you know, something like that. You've seen him move the ball down the field. Don't take the ball out of his hands. Stretch a defense. Let him find the running lane. The offensive line, key here, do not let anybody penetrate to beat you. Bailey, the fullback, 21. Nice job kicking out. And then just north and south once you make the decision. Well, he's already got 62 yards in the game, 43 on a kick return, 19 yards on four carries. And here he comes again. Tumulty is there to make the stop on this play, and let's go down to the sideline and Dr. Jerry Punch. Gentlemen, running back Terrell Willis suffered a non-contact injury. He sprained his right ankle against Army. They said last week at Virginia Tech he was only 70%. This week he told us he would only be 80%. What that means is he's clocked at 4-2-8 in the 40. He's slowed by the ankle injury tonight. He's a 4-3-5 runner. Pretty <laughs> impressive, I think. Craig, he, he told us yesterday that, you know, he said, I am faster on this surface, but I had rather play on the grass because of the concussion when you get hit. But uh, he did. He said 80%. <laughs> Boy, a lot of people would like to be at 80% with that ability. Almost a great catch by Brantley was behind him. Couldn't gain control down at the 10. Forte didn't practice this week. He's battled with flu. And this is the tough pass to throw, but an even tougher pass to catch because the ball carrier is going, running, looking behind him. And, and you just wonder, without practicing during the week, if your timing isn't off just a little bit in the opening series. Yesterday when he finished his interview, he headed back to uh, his room to, uh, to catch a nap before the evening workout because uh, the virus had really been giving him some trouble. this time pressure comes from behind and it's Tumulty who will be there to wreck the play and knock him down for the loss along with Halepin. Rutgers offensive coordinator Stan Parrish told me just a moment ago for the kickoff that he worried about the blitz coming and Pitt has to do something to put pressure and to take him out of the routine. He's lucky he didn't fumble the football right there when he turned around. That's a good point. Battaglia had released his man, was looking possibly to be thrown to, but uh, there was just not enough time. Then a stat 42-yard attempt. Got plenty of distance on this one, and he has got it. So let's take a break. 10.32 left in the opening quarter. Rutgers 3, pit nothing. Rutgers goes on top as Benestad knocks home a field goal of 42 yards and uh, Mr. Forte directs the offense to go on top of this one by a count of uh, three to nothing. Now we get a chance to look at the at the Pitt Panthers and see what they can put together offensively as uh, their super weapon so to speak is uh, back home in the Steel City not here and able to participate tonight. Boy he's a fine one.
Denoris Mosley, number 11. Average just over 22 yards per return. His longest, you can see, at 40. As Benestad will kick it off. Mosley from the three. Wow, what a hit. Football comes loose at the 12. Who's got it? Scarlet Knights say they do. the danger of being a kick return man in football. I they could never talk me into doing this thing. When you get up behind there, somebody's usually coming down crazy, and you see the helmet right on the football, on the ground, and because of Rutgers' aggressiveness to the ball, there are a lot of red jerseys around it. Anthony Coffin is the man who caused the fumble, the senior out of Teaneck, and Mike Fullman recovered, number 27. Turns the corner, and he'll be stopped at the 10. Moment on the sideline who made the recovery just a moment ago. Now, if you're Pitt, your defense just came off the field. They got to go right back on. The offense now has been standing on the sideline on a chilly evening, not a tremendously cold, but now they got to warm up all over again. And you got to hope that you can keep them out of the end zone, maybe. It's a moral victory if you, if you hold them to only a field goal. Though. Which it was the last series. By holding them to field goal, a moral victory. That's exactly right. Because he picked up the first fourth down situation, then went for the field goal. Willis again. That's Tumulty for that middle linebacking spot. It will make the hit on him at the eight-yard line. And it's going to bring up a third down. Seven carries now already in this ball game, And we have just gone under 10 minutes to play. And Willis has a total of 29 yards. I fully expect to see this guy carry the ball 30, 35 times tonight. And at this rate right here, he certainly he may have that by halftime. And you know, really what's unbelievable about this, we haven't talked a whole lot about Bruce Presley, the guy that's a sophomore who is a tremendous runner in this conference. In fact, speaking of running backs, Bill Bailey, number 21, a senior, has just checked into the lineup. And you can see the Brian Forte. Either didn't like what he saw defensively or didn't want to get a fight. They do it, and they do it quite often. 40.6 points a ball game. Number four behind Nebraska, Florida State, and Nevada. There's pretty good company there. Florida also with uh, 40 points a game. And when you score 40 points a game, not many of those are by way of field goal. Most of the time, they punch it in. Well, they got to look for that first third down conversion tonight, Craig, because they're 0 of 2 so far. Shot done, made, knocked away from Brantley, and that's a nice job defensively as David Sumner, the sophomore from Northport, New York, is the man who came back to make the play. Blitz so it came. Brings up four, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Blitz, you know, Blitz comes from the outside, leaves him the one on. Perfect. Looks like a great pass, but then you see him come up. And he makes an unbelievable play knowing the ball was coming. That's when that defensive back is watching the wide receiver's eyes. He sees those eyes light up, pay dirt time, boom, put the hand up. Well, they're going to go for it. They were successful on their last fourth down try. This time they need three yards. Forte rolls the pocket for the end zone, overthrown. He was looking for Brantley. So quite a moral victory for the Pitt Panthers here to lose the ball at the 14 yard line on a kickoff following a field goal and Johnny Major's crew will take the ball over not good field position but at this juncture they don't really care John Ryan will be the starter at quarterback tonight John is a sophomore out of Boardman Ohio 57 percent is what he throws for the year has five touchdowns in five interceptions and Billy West is the man who gets the call he is a freshman from Smithfield Ohio but they'll throw on first down and complete it for a gain of nine and let's check the starters for the Pitt Panthers as they open this one tonight for the first time on offense in this Big East matchup against Rutgers John Ryan as we just mentioned he is the guy that he in fact has shown great progress through this season now the wide receivers the man 
that he looks for the most is 87 Junior Green. Great ability, has two touchdowns, 60 yards his longest, so he can go get it. And Reuben Brown, as far as the offensive lineman, probably the best up there. Coaches think that he has a chance to play in the NFL after his college days. West and Billy gets some rather rude treatment on his first carry in this one tonight as Keith Bryant is there to nail him. Let's meet the starters for the Scarlet Knights tonight on defense. Andrew Beckett, number 98. He's a senior from Barrington, New Jersey. Very steady, very good pass rusher. The linebackers, well, Jamil Jackson, just a super steady player. He's a senior from Elizabeth, New Jersey. And in the secondary, a guy that has really stepped it up, playing like a senior should, and that's Jay Bellamy. He is the leader in that secondary for the guys from Rutgers. Ryan rolls it. Kid as he throws the ball and it's going to bring up a punting situation as that offensive series went absolutely nowhere and Craig you can speak to the situation better than anybody when you take away a guy like Curtis Martin the defense can do a lot of cheating it gives them a chance to put a lot of people around the line of scrimmage and when you get a lot of people around the line of scrimmage that gives you a chance to put more pressure on the quarterback a young pit offense without their star leader usually makes mistakes. We see the great first down play, and all of a sudden they stumble two plays in a row, and they got to turn it over. Cochran to pump. Good coverage kick. This is Brantley. Retreats to the 40. Breaks off one tackle and almost got to the outside. It's a six-yard return following a 46-yard kick. Well, the Don't Miss edition of ESPN's Emmy Award-winning documentary series, Outside the Lines, explores coaches in the 90s. That is coming up at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Among the coaches comment on what it's like to coach of the decade, Mike Ditka, Pat Riley, Sparky Anderson, Nick Vermeil, just to name a few. 7.30 Eastern Time, coaching in the 90s and Outside the Lines, right here on ESPN tomorrow. Players surely have changed in the 90s. <laughs> Now, Lucas has come in at quarterback. Ray is a sophomore. More scrambling ability from this young man, but they go with the running play, and Presley, the other tailback that Craig has been talking about, he checks in for the first time. Now, he's a bigger version at 5'10", 215 pounds, as you look at Lucas. Rutgers has really been quick to do this throughout the season. They wanted Forte to be the guy, Lucas to be the guy. Neither one really took control. So when one is cold and the team isn't scoring points, that's when they make the change. Well, I mentioned his sprinting ability. He's a very good athlete, and he possesses 4-4 speed as you look at, at Forte. And Lucas and Forte are extremely good friends, very close. As Preston bounces to the outside, can't make it. Gerald Simpson with an excellent open field tackle to knock him down for a loss. That's a good sign of a defense when a ball carrier bounces to the outside that has quickness if they're there. Because a lot of times you'll see an inferior defense that can't jump out with the ball carrier. Simpson stays at home, plays off the guy, bounces to the outside, and he makes the play. You see Tumulty coming from the inside, number 84. That's important to make sure you don't let your your running backs beat you around the corner. Joe Simpson out of Warren, Ohio. Pressure. Lucas rolls the pocket, throws it incomplete as they forced him out. Mario Henry is the guy that he was looking for. And that's going to bring up a fourth down situation. And the last two series by the Pitt defense uh, has really had the Rutgers guessing. Of course, Ron, Rutgers opened the ball game up with a big kick return, a couple of three plays, and it was quick. Now, one of the areas that uh, they're concerned about. Well, let's see if, if Shermetta gets some pressure as Jones is back in a single safety for Pitt. Eight-man rush, and they're coming after him. Gets his kick away. Jones runs into his own man and makes the catch at the 21-yard line. So let's take a break. 6.04 left of this opening quarter. Rutgers on top. If you were considering buying a new luxury sedan, this little demonstration of handling, uh-oh, could be a major turning point. Oops. For it appears that the front-wheel drive Acura Legend sedan, even with its longer wheelbase for a smooth ride, has the inside track on luxury. 
Pitts already had one miscue on a special teams play, the fumble. They saved themselves with defense. Jay Jones back this time, almost does the same thing, fumbling the football, just got real lucky there that somebody was, he was able to get the ball. And if you're Pitt and being young, you can't afford, they are extremely lucky right now to be down only three to nothing, can't afford to make mistakes. And what an honest mistake that would have been because it was a teammate trying to help him out, but he didn't realize exactly how close Jones was. Dukes and Colicchio check into the backfield for Pitt. Colicchio, first carry of the night, stumbles over one of his offensive linemen. He'll take it to the 25, and it's Andrew Beckett is the man defensively. Pitt coaches, they said, we will not change our game plan. Curtis Martin's gone, but we're going to stick with what has gotten us to this point. So, Malikio, the rest of the runners at Pitt have to be ready to carry the ball and carry the burden. Skoraki, the tight end, just came out of the lineup and is favoring his left arm. I don't know if he just got a little dinger there on the funny bone or what. Short drop to throw. That was supposed to be a little stop and go, and now here comes one flag and now another. Katano... I think is a man he got tangled up with. And Katano is a good example of what Dr. Jerry Punch is talking about as far as injuries. They're going to call defensive holding. A few weeks back when we did Rutgers at Penn State, Katano, who wears number 80, was a tight end. Now he's over on the other side of the football and has played in five games as a defensive player. Now he is a starter, and that's, that's some of the moves that that they've had to make. So Pitt's not the only club that's had just a wealth of injuries. This Rutgers team has been decimated at times. So that's why we should expect to see some fumbles tonight. We'll see some nice execution, and then the next play could be terrible. Exactly. Lakeo again. Puts the head down and gets it to the 38-yard line. Swinger and Beckett are there defensively to, to make the hit. Lickio's not a bad runner. I saw him last season in a game that was against Rutgers. He's got good vision. He runs hard. But the main thing you got to remember about the guy, he hasn't played a lot, so the conditioning and the vision and the reaction won't quite be there. Lickio this time with a sweep. Great block by Dukes. As he puts the head down, and he's going to have the pit first down. That's a tough run, as you can see. Dukes, number 40. Just take out the defensive player, and uh, Bressel is the man who finally made the stop. How many times will you find a running game that's successful featuring a tailback without a fullback that blocks for you, sets it up inside, then he gets around the corner. you got to know that as a ball carrier, that extra three yards over there next to that sidelines will enable you to turn the corner and don't give up on it and try to cut back before you get there. Chad's a senior. He's out of Albany, New York. Wants to throw it back to Colicchio, but he had coverage, and now drops the football and picks it up again. Oh, my goodness. Midnight Madness is tomorrow, but he's <laughs> dribbling right here at the Meadowlands. Good heavens. <laughs> Look at him laughing. <laughs> oh, my. Is it the full moon or what? Where is that cattail on the back of 14? Well, it was a nice job defensively as, the, as Mark Washington. See, he wants to throw to Colicchio. He's just come out of the backfield. And you're going to see him hitch just right here. He sees the tight end down the middle, but he knew that he couldn't set up to rifle it in time. <laughs> Here's the dribble. <laughs> Colicchio again. Hurdles a man, breaks it open. Has five, has ten. Cut it off at 14. And Washington comes up to make the stop. And there may be some eyebrows being raised as Rutgers is on top three to nothing. But right now, it is the Pitt Panthers who are getting a good burst from their offensive unit. A little composure right now. The offensive line matching up with their people. Did I tell you about the vision? You see how he allowed the blocks to occur? Gets in the secondary, uses his shoulders, and runs the football, as you said, 5-10 and given 14. Now, Billy West has just checked into the lineup, and now Pitt wants a timeout. Doug Graber cannot be real pleased right now, the way things are going. 
And let's check in again with Dr. Jerry Punch. Gentlemen, a little bit ago you talked about Chad Squawky, the sophomore tight end for Pittsburgh. It came off the field holding his left arm. What he has is a chronically subluxing or what's called dislocating left shoulder. Now, Rob Blank, the pit trainer, has put a special restraining device. If you look at his left arm, he has a, a, basically a strap just above the elbow to hold the arm in close to the body. That strap is a brand new device. It's not working that well. Very shortly, they're going to change the strap. This young man has had a tremendous problem over the year. Last year, he missed the entire season. He lost the battle with a circular saw. Amputated part of two fingers on his left hand. He has had a tough start at Pittsburgh. Ron? Boy, I'll say, that's... <laughs> That, that's the real definition of wanting to play right there. Because there's probably nothing that, uh, that that stings anymore, and you know that it can happen every time you get hit, is the fact that, that your shoulder is going to go out. That's, that's not much fun. Rushing yardage in this one so far. Pit 28. Rutgers a total of 29, and Pitt has 27 of their 28 on this drive. In fact, they finally got some decent field position to take the ball over here. behind the line of scrimmage and again it's Bryant who is there to kind of post him and then he gets help from five more teammates. We've seen Pitt. They've had a few running plays successfully up in the middle. Now I go back to that boot. Keep Bryant. You see he has been coming to the inside there made the play. Roll to the outside. Keep that defense stretched. Don't allow them just to pin their ears back and go towards the middle of the field. three minutes to play in his opening quarter. Makes it to West this time. Deep over the middle. Got his man there at the 10-yard line. Billy Davis first and goal at the five-yard line for the Panthers. 34 yards. Davis went right up the middle. Good play action. That's what the running game has enabled him to do on this series. He finds his man, Davis, down the middle. Great job of holding on to the football. He knows he's going to get hit. As soon as the ball is released, the wide receiver has got to put his eyes on the football, cover it up. Here it comes, baby. Running play. Touchdown, Billy West. Concerned Doug Graber across the way as Pitt took that and looked very convincing in driving the ball down the field. And following Pitt this year, we've seen them jump out, look well in the first quarter. Second quarter, you see the power play. The fullback knocks down his guy, and it's north-south running. Nobody got to his legs. Reuben Brown, the man we talked about in the lineups, number 78, is the one who got the key block and started the domino effect on the outside. Kalmanides to attempt the extra point, number three. And he's got it. So it's seven to three. The Pitt Panthers vault on top in this one. And if you like great college action, the ESPN has got it for you day after tomorrow. This is what the schedule looks. Like. You know, this has got to be a mistake every week when I would look at that stat. It's going to be a good ball game this week. I think it will be. Yeah, it's. Uh, you know, uh, Stokes has, has really come on. Uh, in fact, Terry Donahue's entire football team, not just the offensive. Uh, offensively, they've been extremely explosive, but they're playing good defense as well. Well, a couple weeks ago, I hadn't seen this week's stats, but they were the number one takeaway team in the country. Their defense is massive. Yep. Bailey and Willis back in a twin safety for Rutgers. Emmett Leon with the kick. This is going to come down to Willis from the eighth. Tried to take it the other direction and going to be knocked down hard at the 22-yard line. That was McGee on the special teams. So the drive, eight plays, 78 yards. They were aided by one holding penalty, which gave them uh, the initial first down on the drive. Six runs, two passes, and Billy West gets the touchdown. That's his third of the season. West excelled at the end, but remember, Colicchio came in, started that series for him at running back. You have to wonder if deep in their own territory, if they didn't want to go with an experienced player over the freshman. Lucas, there's the kind of move that he provides with that quickness. Cuts it back against the grain, and he'll go to the 30 is Tumulty. 
is the man who takes him down. This is exactly, Ron, why they go in and they make the adjustments with him. When Forte wasn't excelling and moving the team, they put Lucas in, not so much because he can throw the football, but right here. He makes the guy miss. How many times have we seen Charlie Ward do that at Florida State? This is what he reminds me of, and then he gets the ball down, eight-yard gain because of his athletic ability. Almost five yards of carry, three touchdowns for him. They go straight ahead with Presley, though. And with a head of steam, he'll have the first down out to the 36. It's Moody who is there to make the stop. Moody is one of two New Jersey players on this team. He's a TD Moody. Sophomore from Patterson. Up the, the pit sideline, the, the players are up and, and cheering on the, uh, the defense while the offense is over on the bench and, and talking with the coaches. And, they feel uh, a little better at this juncture. We're under two minutes to play in this opening quarter. Presley, nothing at left guard. He'll bounce it to the outside. Hoslick is the man who actually got a hold of his foot. If he doesn't slow him up, he might have had some yardage back to the short side of the field. Ray Lucas works for you and against you. On that particular time, the man stayed at home. The outside linebackers realize with Lucas in the game, they can't go flying towards the middle of the field. They must stay on the outside or Lucas will get around the corner on them. So when Presley tried to break to the outside, linebackers waiting on him. Up two new running backs come in. Willis is there along with Bailey. Or Presley, I beg your pardon. Yes. Caught out of bounds. Mario Henry had a little comeback at the 43, and Whaley was the man who was covering. Under one minute to play in this first quarter of action from the Meadowlands, seven to three, the Pitt Panthers leading. And a little bit of a stunner. I know we got a lot of football left, but Rutgers was a huge favorite coming into this ball game tonight. <laughs> Mostly because Curtis Martin wasn't going to be here. We didn't know how they'd get to the Well, they were a big favorite when he was scheduled to come in. <laughs> Rutgers really failing on third downs right now. Especially in motion. Good pressure on the quarterback, and he will go down, and that is Tom Burnt, the junior from Mentor, Ohio. We told you in the lineup how aggressive and tough he could be, and even if you scattered booze from the partisans that are wearing the scarlet colors tonight. They got to Lucas with only a four-man rush. This wasn't like they came with a blitz. They tried to spread the linebackers out by putting Presley in motion. They did that, but the line just simply got beat from the inside. Nick Scherbetta, he is a former linebacker. Lippitt started the season, but decided to leave the team. And now Scherbetta has taken it over and whistles and I believe the 25 second clock. Nope, in the quarter. So we'll take a break. Seven to three pit. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Meadowlands, Ron Frank. Welcome back to the Meadowlands, Ron Franklin, Craig James and Dr. Jerry Punch. And hope you're enjoying this Thursday evening game between uh, Rutgers and Pitt and the Panthers leading as Shermetta stands back to kick and gets a very low pass from center. But I'll tell you, he doesn't suffer in his effort. This kick all the way back to the 19-yard line. Jay Jones across the 25, and he's out to the 28. And following a snap that rolled to him, a 47-yard punt and then 11 on the return. It's a good job by Shermetta just to feel it. You know what happens a lot of times by punters that they get a poor snap, they come up, and they don't think about their form. They just react. And all, oftentimes, you'll see a great punt come out of that. But he did there. First quarter stats, time of possession, hit 9.51, or 5.09, I should say. Rutgers, 9.51. Total yardage, 69 pit, 42 for Rutgers. Rutgers only has seven yards passing. Blake Yo. Hit in the backfield, going to be knocked down for a loss. And Bryant, number 91, we've called his name and Beckett already a lot as that down group of linemen doing an excellent job. And in fact, the point that, that Craig made is, is very valid when, for both sides of the football. When you can get it done without having to send your linebackers. 91, you see him, Bryant, a little stunt to the inside. He's slanting there, and there's no way you can cut back inside as a ball carrier when you see that angle they've taken. Ryan has it complete at the 38-yard line, Junior Green. 
And Ersin caught it out of bounds. And that's right in front of the pit bench. And you can imagine the reaction from Johnny Majors and his staff, but uh, the official there says, no deal. Well, you know, the key is, can he get his feet down? Good pass protection. Not a bad pass to the outside. Green goes up in the air. Now, is he knocked out of bounds, or does he come down? Well, the official is two steps away. Johnny is saying it's good, and the official says no. So it's a third down, and the line to make is the 38. Bryant steps up into the pocket, gonna run. And boy, he gets nailed as the ball comes loose, and there's a flag down at the line of scrimmage. Sheridan and Washington combined on the stop. All sides on the defense. So, goes without saying, it'll be eight to pick up the first, but they, they get a reprieve. Rutgers trying to bring a lot of people and blitz that time. They just timed the snap count wrong. That's why it's really important for a quarterback, Ryan, to know that if it's coming, maybe you stall it out a little bit. And it's important for those linemen to wait for the count. He may change his cadence just a little bit. It may be on two, and you know, you give him a hut and a long silence between that and that next one, and boom, they're off time. I'm sure Rich Rachel is seeing right now. Hey, guys, we stopped them. They should be punting. But uh, we very foolishly gave up a five-yard penalty. Now we've got to do it all over again. So third down and eight. to go he's covered in scarlet at the 30 and now it will be fourth down at about nine and the punting unit already headed on the field Michelle you Rachel, you talked about the defensive coordinator he knows he's got to do things sometimes to create opportunities he's got young players all over the field and when you got two redshirt freshman corners you Ooh. hate to put them on an island too much but sometimes you got to make things happen as and they it, did just now and those defensive players better know that when they go they got to get to the quarterback Another good kick by Cochran. Fair catch called for by Brantley and made down at the 24. So the timeout was taken with him. 7-3. Pitt is surprising. Very comfortable evening in the Northeast tonight. Temperatures in the low to mid 40s. Let's make it high to mid 40s. And as I mentioned earlier, no swirling wind. And this stadium can be tough. As Lucas rolls the pocket, now it's just about run out of space. Gets it away, and it's intercepted at the 50-yard line by David Sumner. That was a very, very poor selection of plays as far as Ray Lucas is concerned. So many more options, and he just threw, he didn't have a receiver close. I, maybe he was trying to throw it away. The problem that he had is before this, the receivers were open. He waited until the play was over with in the secondary he should just tuck the ball and run it now when they first come out of that pocket there were receivers downfield waiting for him you got to throw the ball on rhythm turnovers now one each as Pitt who had a very nice looking drive of 78 yards gets the ball at midfield pitch to Billy West they set up the reverse and they run it and it's going to be hit and knocked down for a loss as Beckett comes across and it's a loss of 13 yards. Anderson just had no place to go. I don't like reverses. I, I'm just telling you, you know, unless you're Rocket Ismail coming around there, because it takes so long to develop. Bryant's there, and look at it. Beckett's just waiting on him. You, you, if you're going to run a reverse, put him in a slot, boom, boom, and get around the corner. And Craig, you always know that when you're the guy handing off to the reverse man, when he already has a grimace on his face, <laughs> you know there's penetration has been made. It's also, like you said, no, don't give it to me. <laughs> Not no. Ryan with the play action, wants to go on top. Hit from behind. Did he lose the ball at the 40? Very close, as Sneathan got him from behind, and that's when you come up with fumbles when you don't see somebody coming from behind and hit you. Obviously, Ryan has a real strong presence in the pocket. He understands when folks are around him. And yet, 
if you're if you're Rutgers, you got if you get a chance at that ball coming from behind, you, you know it just takes maturity. But boom, back with the football. That's right. John Ryan, education major, Boardman, Ohio. Third down conversions are 0 of 2, and they need the 40-yard line of Rutgers. They try to set up the screen, and they do. This Chad Dukes not only can block, he's a good ball carrier. Puts the head down. He's going to be five yards shy of the first down. And now an interesting call for Johnny Majors. Well, I guess not really, though. You're up seven to three. Uh, do you? I guess you pooch it out of bounds and let your defense keep doing what they've been doing. Exactly. Don't give Rutgers a chance to get back in at midfield. Punch them down there and try to knock it out inside the 20, inside the 15-yard line. Rutgers really cold right now. And with Pitt and that turnover, really disappointing that they didn't move the ball. Cochran has really been one of the stars of the ball game for the Panthers. Nate has done an excellent job. Here's Brantley. Two kicks for 37 and a half, and it's what he's done with it. Like this one right here. Good coverage kick, and it's going to go out of bounds inside the 15. They'll say at the 11 and a half yard line. Let's take a break. Community outreach program. He reached to grade school children and he won the Henry Rutgers Scholarship. And you see his GPA at 3.2. Just an excellent job on the field and also off. And he has come back into the ball game at quarterback. One of four throwing for seven yards as the play goes up the middle with Willis. And I tell you, with every snap of the football, the pit defense is gaining confidence and really getting a little bit higher with each play. So Rutgers is going to try to put a little oomph and gasoline in their tank and go with a no huddle and get the thing shaken up. They did this. They did this against Penn State to try to get them to, to sequence and not get any extra defensive back. And Forte is hit, fumbles the football. Marzak is the man who caused the fumble. has recovered inside the six-yard line. Morins, number 98, makes the recovery. Forte and Lucas just aren't throwing on time. The receivers are there, and they're reluctant to let the football go when the receivers are coming out of the break. You see the three guys. This is a coverage sector, or a poor decision on Forte's part in my behalf, because I, obviously it's easier to see up here but he's got to let the football go when he sets and plants that foot. You know, I have to wonder, both of those kids have had stomach virus in the last two days, and they're playing like they're being affected. As Felicio is going to be hit in the backfield and knocked down by Bressel as he returns to the line of scrimmage. But just the fact that both have had viruses in the last couple of days, it's just like, you know, they're not 100%. And it's... It's tugging at them a little bit. You know, when you're sick, you're in the meeting rooms during the week, you're trying to listen and concentrate, but if you don't feel good, everybody knows you go to work, you don't feel good, you don't concentrate. Well, Forte's had the shoulder injury. They didn't know how much he could throw. And Lucas has had a leg injury. And Pitt is trying to take advantage of this miscue right now. Inside the five, and it's going to be third down and go. Sneathan and Bristle come up to combine on the stop. And Johnny knows he doesn't want three points out of this situation when you get a gift like this. You go to what? This is like bouncing it off a tree on your second shot of the par four and it winds up with a 14 incher. You can't miss that putt. <laughs> And let's go down to Jerry Punch for a second. <laughs> Gentlemen, Mark Washington, the strong safety for Rutgers, is out of the game for the rest of the evening. Has a second-degree concussion. One of those 14 players who tried to come back is out for the night. Back up there. Okay, Jerry. Quick fade route. And cut for the touchdown, Junior Green. Rutgers up there tight, trying to stop that run, and the pump fake, the patience of Ryan, and then from that point, Green went out. What a great block by the Colicchio. Green with the touchdown, and all of a sudden, it is 13 to 3 pit. We've got eight and a half minutes left to play until halftime. 
You notice how the green went up and caught the ball at that highest point. He didn't wait until it came down, and they could have hit him and dropped the football. Kalmanides knocks this one home. And as we go to break, let's take one more look at the touchdown. The Pitt Panthers, 14. And Rutgers, 3. And look at Green and just what Craig was talking about. At the top of his leap, touchdown Pitt. Who are you? It's in 32 seconds left until halftime. And Rutgers was over a two-touchdown favorite coming into the ballgame. Now, in last week's ballgame, they were down by a huge margin and came back after halftime. But, uh, again, you can't make a habit of doing those kind of things. So if you're going to get out of shovel, you've got to dig a hole for the opponent, not for yourself first. Of course, last week they had a chance to come back because the quarterback got hot. Right now, the quarterbacks that have been rotating for Rutgers, are, they cannot find the rhythm. And in my opinion, like I say, we'll try to get a shot for you, too, to, to let you understand what I'm talking about. The receivers are breaking, coming open, but the quarterback's planning and not letting it go. Injuries, illness, and short work week. And it all adds up to you need the reps every week. Kevin Leone will kick it off. Bill Bailey and Terrell Willis. Bailey to the right, Willis to the left. He joined us late. Willis almost broke the opening kickoff. He took it 43 yards, and he'll get an opportunity here from the five. Cuts it up, and then at the 30-yard line, there's a, a big roadblock. That was 95, Tony Reardon. come back out Ron I'd run the football I, I would say to my offensive line fellas it's up to you we're not throwing the football well right now we have got one of the best running backs one of the best combinations in the country you've got to go out match up with your man run your assignment give our ball carriers a chance that's a good point and the offensive line has had a good consistent year they've worked very hard Willis and he'll take it out of the 35 to the 36 and let's check in again with Dr. Jerry Punch. Jerry? Craig, that's exactly what Mark Deal, the Rutgers offensive line coach, did just a moment ago. To say that his conversation with the offensive line was animated, well, that's an understatement. He, he used terms like mental mistakes, missed blocking assignments, lack of concentration. He was very, very animated in discussing his offensive line. So just go back to basics, run the ball inside, and we could move it downfield. Back up there. Okay, that's... Uh... What you got to do right now, you don't need to do it in a hurry. You got plenty of time. But when you got a guy like this, and look at Willis. Well, if you get him one step, if he breaks it, if he gets that cut to the outside, then he can be see you later with just one play. We talked about him running a 4-2-8 before he sprained his ankle. He's down to a 4-3-8, which, you know, <laughs> a lot of guys be happy with that. Notice how he sees. He sets the blocks up, draws the defense to the inside. And then the outside, if you're a wide receiver here, you must at Rutgers block in the secondary because the two ball carriers, more than likely, are going to end up next to you. Seven and a half minutes left until halftime. Willis, not much going this time. Barnes and Tumulty right there in the middle, number 90, number 84. Jump into the fray and stop that one before he gets started. It'll be second and long. This is where good coaching comes in. Don't give up on the run because you had a one-yard gain. Those offensive linemen, they get into a rhythm, and they get into a silent communication with that running back. They all of a sudden, both of them realize, ah, if I'd have just done this, it would have made it. And so you stick with it, and it pays off for you. Willis has already carried the ball 11 times for 47 yards. On the shotgun, the pressure again. Cortez got a man, and it's going to be intercepted. Did he stay in bounds? Nope, caught it out of bounds. Gerald Simpson. Seagraves is the man who was in hot, hot pursuit. Rutgers just, when he makes this throw, you see him pump the football. When he did that, that defensive back forgot about covering the wide receiver. He went to the ball. He became the wide receiver. So it's third down, and Rutgers needs the 47-yard line a pit. They're 0 
for five and third down conversions tonight. Deep over the middle. He's got his man, Mario Henry, inside the 35 and down to the 32. Jay Jones was there on him, but it's a gain of 25. We've been talking about the quarterback getting in the pocket, setting up, and throwing on time. Henry from the left side, as soon as he made his break, Forte got the ball, saw it, read the coverage, went, boom, let it go. Anticipation, knowing and reading the coverage. First time it looked like, Ron, that he's really been in the pocket reading rather than just looking at the defensive line. Huge first down right there. As we're about to go under six minutes to play until halftime. Pitt leading, if you've just joined us, 14 to 3. And it's Willis. Tries to cut it back. He'll be stopped after a couple. John McCray is there to trip him up. Good looking athlete. Man, the way he runs the football, the design, the, the blocking schemes that they have. You think he's coming up the middle, but the guard stays around, goes to the outside. Craig, the, the amazing thing about what he's done this year, he is fifth of the nation in rushing. He's only started two football games. He's been coming off the bench. A lot of New York writers say in a couple of years, put his name close to the Heisman because he can be that kind of difference maker. Tumulty is uh, the man who steps up and makes the hit. And imagine whenever that Rutgers defense gets better, they're going to give the ball back to the offense a lot more. We'll give him more time. The average is down, way down from what his seasonal average is. But he'll keep hacking away, and all of a sudden he'll knock them for a 60 or 70-yard run. That's why Johnny Majors and his staff, they've got to continue to, to emphasize to those defensive players, fellas, stay in your lanes, your responsibilities, or this guy will hurt you. Well, and what happens now is they bring in a fresh set of legs in Bruce Presley. And the only reason he has just under 500 yards is because of the presence of Willis. Quick pass, complete to the tight end inside the 15, Battaglia, the sophomore from Queens, will move the chains for the Scarlet Knights. And McCray is the man who put it into the way. You know, as you see what they're going to do, when this secondary, look at this big pocket right here. That's where that tight end has got to go and sit down. And once he does that, Forte knows where his pocket is. Corner's way to the outside. Linebacker tumble to 84 hadn't come over yet. <laughs> Presley, the only setback. He has the give, and he is hit at the line of scrimmage and being pushed back for a one-yard loss, and it's Hoslick who made the initial contact. And then Tumulty is there to help put the stopper on him. You know, Tumulty, <laughs> he's almost a throwback. I talked with him at dinner last night. And just one of those type of players, you know, if this were if this were a dirt field, he'd be covered in mud and have a little blood all over him. He he's that kind of football player. <laughs> he is. Last year, he had to sit out most of it. He had like a chest pulled muscle, and that really hurt Pitt last season. Big inspiration for their team. And he's only a sophomore out of Penn Hills, Pennsylvania. And he really loves it. He loves the game. Shotgun. Forte steps up. Nothing there. And he just throws this one into section 302. Brantley is the man who got one hand on it. Seagraves again coming after him. You could see number 91, and he just closed the door. There was no place to go. Wide receivers, when they see a quarterback in desperation, everybody has that internal clock, 1, 1,002, 1,003. It's not working. Move. Get out of there. Receivers have got to come back. It's the receiver's responsibility to get in the vision of the quarterback. Brantley's got to come back to the football. Don't stand in the end zone for six. Come straight back up the sidelines and get yourself a 10-yard completion. Blitz is coming. Pass is incomplete. And boy, Mario Hindley, just as he dropped the football, got his headgear handed to him. Whoa. This is Sumner who comes up and makes the tag on him. That lazy corner, you got to know that if he's going to roll back or if he's going to come back up into the flat and stick with you. So they'll go for the field goal attempt. Benestad, who hit one from 42 earlier. This one will be a 31-yard attempt from the near hash mark. Wide 
left. It has been that kind of night for Rutgers so far. Three minutes and 41 seconds left until halftime. And the Pitt Panthers continuing to gain a little momentum with every move tonight. They're up 14 to 3. And let's go back and check in with Chris Fowler. Chris, they don't get in until late tomorrow evening. I'll tell you, they got a little practice that they do. Felicio tries to turn the corner. Won't go down. You guys need to ask him about the... Uh, his team calls it to approach after darkness. It's like a, like a commando. They don't leave until the last plane. They won't work out. They won't walk through until like 1025, 1030 tomorrow night at the Rose Bowl. And... Uh, and the, the players kind of like that. They say, under the cloak of darkness. And that's what that's what that team wants. That's what they like. Well, and it, it does And they play, they 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 play that kind of defense, too, don't they? Brian steps up, hit from behind. And just what you were talking about, holding the football down to the side, but nobody could knock it away. As Sneath and, and Bryant combined in the stop. And now Pitt needs to be very careful. They've got the 14-3 lead with under two minutes to play until halftime. Uh, be safe, and if nothing else, your punter has done a very good job at keeping you in this one tonight. Let the work go back to him. Got to find that football with a hand, slap it out. Seven men dropped in coverage. Only four are rushing. Therefore, you know somebody is going to be coming after you at the end of that coverage sack. You've got to be ready to jump up and run if you're the quarterback. Draw play, Felicio hit in the backfield, knocked down for a loss, and I believe Sneathan is the man who comes through and makes the tackle. And now a timeout has been called by Rutgers to stop the clock with 2.05 left of the intermission, so we'll take the break with him. We'll be right back. And they plot to Nate Cochran, waiting for the snap two yards deep. has got the return on. Driving kick. This is a very returnable kick. Bradley from the 40 tries to dodge his own man and then his hit and is going to be knocked another 10 yards back down the field and that's Chad Dukes who not only plays fullback, runs the ball well and blocks, but he also plays special teams well. Here's, here's a, one of the subtle things that coaches are looking for during a game. A few punts ago, look at the return team. Rutgers just piles out of there. Looks like you got a great opening for a fake punt. Now, the coaches upstairs are looking for the very next punt. They're trying to see if it is indeed there. Look, they hold up. They guard the punter. So little things that coaching staffs can see. Now you've got this punt we just saw. What do they do? Pretty much bailing out of there. You might have a chance. Of course, it's deep in their territory. I don't know if I'd try it there, but somewhere on the field, you might have an opening. Presley comes back in at running back, 152 showing on the clock until intermission. Forte sets the screen to Presley. Nice move at the 35-yard line and puts the head down, and as a result, he's going to gain another six yards as Whaley makes the stop. <laughs> Open up a bowl of Wheaties for Mr. Presley. Did you hear that? Lickens taking on down there. Get the ball to your tailbacks. That's the key to this offense right now. Look at the open field. The vision that he has, and I mean, this was like thunder. Boom! And he got another three yards. Like Whaley, a, a good, tough senior out of Pittsburgh is the man who hit him. That pass is tipped at the line of scrimmage. Brantley will catch it and step out of bounds as Moses is there with the cover. So they wind up with a gain of three, but with the ball being tipped, just fortunate to still have it. And it stops the clock for them. Seagraves, I believe, is the man who will get a hand on it. Check and see if it's not 91. I just noticed, I look at Forte, how he kind of drifts in the pocket rather than just getting back there at the tip. Great job of concentrating from the receiver. Seagraves has had a good ball game. He had the, the good pressure a moment ago, gets a tip pass there. They try to set the screen, and there's too much pressure, and Presley can't hold on. Well, the tough thing there is you got to let the defensive lineman through, but you got to check them just a little bit. And that time uh, they <laughs> just came pell mell. And again, it was Seagraves who was putting the pressure on. 
<laughs> da -da -da, da -da -da. <laughs> well, he's part of the uh, the fantasy. And I'll tell you what, for the first 30 minutes, the fantasy is coming true as well. Pitt, big underdog in this one tonight as we're getting close to halftime. It is 14 to 3, the Panthers, in a surprise as you look at the numbers on Forte. He'll go with the draw. Presley, only one yard. And the crowd now getting a little bit restless. John McCray makes the stop. A little indication of the confidence level or lack of by Rutgers coaches to run a draw play at this point here when you need to throw the ball down the field. Shermetta comes on to do the kicking. And uh, that's Mosley. The Norris of freshman out of West Palm Beach. To say that it mostly needs a little more strength on his upper body, but he's going to be a very good one. Signals for a fair catch and then runs away from it. And this one's going to be touched dead at the 15. Well, the Colts are trying to stay in contention in the AFC. Jeff George is back at the helm. Uh, he's quarterback of the Colts. The Redskins try to turn their season around. The Skins, uh, they've struggled since their win against the world champion Cowboys in the first week of the season. 8 o'clock, the Colts and the Redskins, Sunday, November the 7th. Watching the Colts last weekend, you know, if Jeff George just had a little drive inside of him, they may have a chance. I'd like to see Richie Pettibone get things going up there in Washington as well. He's been kind of playing with one, one hand tied behind his back with all the injuries they've had. Ooh, tough division to be down. Oh, I'm telling you. Ryan will go down on one knee. Should have to do it one more time, and then that's it. So coming up at halftime, the halftime blitz, and also a live interview with Arizona coach Dick Tomey. That and more. We're about 20 seconds away now. And the fact, they did not start the 25-second clock, so these two clubs can head to the locker room. I tell you what, Ron, I smell the hot dogs cooking. I bet I beat you to the stand. <laughs> <laughs> well, for the Rutgers staff, uh, they got a little talking to do. And for Pitt, it's just keep on keeping on. And they head to the locker room, and there's a chorus of boos for those wearing scarlet. Our score, Pittsburgh, 14. And, and another statistic that we, that we should have pointed out, rushing yards for Pitt with 14. Curtis Martin, he's at home watching. That's exactly right going to come down to Mosley at the goal line. He'll return it. Well, I'll tell you what, these special teams with the wedge and also with the returners really don't show any slack time. They, they put a hit down and get after it. It all starts with a kickoff. At both halves, if you go down and you set the tone, Rutgers opened the game up with a big kick return. We thought Rutgers was going to run down the field. Willis did his thing. That just seemed like to be a cup of coffee for Pitt. They woke up. Blakey Owen Dukes will open it up as the running back for Pitt. And they go with Dukes. Fake the pitch and go with the short run. And let's go down and check in with Jerry Punch. What did you hear at halftime, Jerry? Gentlemen spoke with Johnny Majors coming off at first half, and at halftime he was very, very pleased with the play of his defense. In the last three or four weeks, our defense has gotten better and better, but very concerned about the offense, and we've got to improve our pass protection. We've got to improve. We're getting so much penetration on our misdirection, our cutback plays. We've got to improve our backside blocking. Hopefully we can do that in the second half. Back upstairs. Thanks, Jerry. You know, last week at halftime, uh, they had played decently in the first quarter and then just started making a mistake on top of a mistake. And he really fussed at them about making it like there is a fumble right there. But he's just saying we're going back doing so many things that lose football games. And we got to stay focused. But again, that's a thing of youth. And Craig, you can address this as well as anybody. When you've only got five seniors on a football team, it's, it's a very tough situation as far as having a couple of guys who can stand up and, and take charge. Especially when you get behind, or in this case, when you're ahead. You need somebody on your team and sidelines that tells fellas, hey, don't, don't go to sleep on me, partner. There's still a lot of football to be played. That's right. That's exactly right. Third down, and the line to make is the 32. Bryant sets in the pocket. And has it complete out at the 39-yard line to Billy Davis. 19 yards on the third down pass. 
When they do the boot and they roll out to the left side, Duke's the fullback. You'll see him go underneath. And then you leave, the, the linebacker has to pull up and cover him. Leaves you that little void there. It was really a nice pass by Ryan to get it over that cover, man. Billy Davis, 15 receptions now this year. 244 yards, and he has a touchdown. Two catches here tonight for 52. Chad Duke's the ball carrier as a Bryant comes up to make the stick on him. You know, a player we have not mentioned to this point, Dietrich Gels, who's out with a knee injury, a wide receiver, terrific speed, a guy that you combine his loss with, with Curtis Martin. No doubt about that. Not only as a wide receiver, but you get the leadership. You also get the return ability, which uh, you a lot of experience at. And uh, it's one of those things where, again, an injury has taken a very good ball player, a junior. contact there Jamel Jackson came across and uh, touched but you can see <laughs> Reuben Brown pointing across saying no we didn't move and we'll see what the officials say well last year speaking of gels remember the play that uh, that you're about to see on the screen here the quarterback Alex Van Pelt looking for gels oh let's just bring rain with this one look at gels out running the the secondary, 91 yards for the touchdown. That is a school record. Rutgers won it, 21 to 16, but that's the kind of thing that Gels brings to the party. No place to go for Dukes, and he's hit as he tries to reverse it. He's going to wind up with a loss of four yards, and now Pitt has a third down, and they need about six rather than a third down and two and a half. And let's check in with Jerry again. Gentlemen, you might want to wonder where Dietrich Gels is tonight. Unfortunately, the junior wide receiver underwent arthroscopic surgery two weeks ago for a torn lateral meniscus in his left knee. He'll be able to come back next year, but his season in 1993, unfortunately, is over. Mm -hmm. Well, you could see on that, on that flashback the last year, just uh, he, he has exceptional speed. Corner blitz is on, throws the pass, has it complete to Dukes, and still fighting out to the 45-yard line. Ryan took a shot after he delivered the pass, and you can tell by the grimace on his face that uh, that he's hurting. Like a car wreck, getting hit from behind. He knew that he was going to get pressure. They came with a blitz. You'll see Rutgers deciding to come from the outside, put the pressure on the quarterback. Sean Smith is and the man who got him from behind. Back. Boy, when you, get a, when you get a chance with your fullback one-on-one, -on -one, you know that that linebacker's trailing. You just pay the price. You take it for the team, and, hey, that hurts. Ryan's been an unsung hero, but Coach Major said yesterday he has continued and continues to get better. Made a lot of progress. Licchio puts the head down, picks up five tough yards. Bellamy from the secondary will come up to make the hit. An attitude adjuster for a football team is when, the, when you run the toss sweep and your corners, they're responsible to keep everything inside. And to watch that corner in the fullback hit and to listen to the sound and then everybody else fill in, ooh, it's, it's true football. <laughs> Second to five, short drop and the pass complete. Close to the first down as Junior Green came off the line of scrimmage, looked back and the ball was there. That's Fullman defensively. Rutgers is in trouble. Ryan's hit his last five passes. He just seems to be finding a little groove. The receivers are setting up. They have confidence that the ball is coming to them. He seems to be reading the defense well, and, and which is something that neither side has had tonight. I contend to you that the third down and 12 pass just a little bit ago may turn out to be as big a play as there is in this ball game because rather than three and out, and that offense has just been whipped up on a little bit in the locker room mentally with a verbal uh, tongue lashing. Now that offense is still standing over there. And if Pitt goes down the field and put points on the boards, particularly, then, hey, they're just keeping on keeping on. Game opened up where Pitt's offense had to sit on the sidelines before they got in the game. Now the second half, Rutgers is sitting over there. That's right. We've almost played five minutes of the second half. This is Dukes right up the middle. Inside the 20 to the 18, 14 yards. Chad Dukes is a is, is a real valuable asset to Pitt. 
He was at one time a tailback. They put him at fullback. He's done a lot of things. You're trying to take advantage with this play here of the defense over pursuing. You see the cutback lane? That is what the over pursuit gives the fullback in Dukes being the former tailback has good eyes. And you can see Matt Bloom, 73 downfield. I've hit one person. I'm looking for another. Straight ahead with this handoff and he'll take it down to the 15 yard line. And it's Keith Bryant down at the bottom of that stack. You think back to the years when Pitt was such a great football team, they had those offensive lines, Bill Fralick and the Dan Marinos. At one year, in 1980, I think they had like 17 players go on to the National Football League. This team is rich in tradition, and, and if there's a guy to bring them back, it's got to be Johnny Majors. He's got to be pleased so far tonight. Short pumps it once, puts it up. Green is there, and it was just a little bit off the mark. Johnny Majors, when he first came to Pitt, he had a rebuilding job. He was able to do that. Tony Dorsett, a lot of great players. Hugh Green that allowed him to come back. You see the record that he accomplished there, including the national championship in 1976. And, and I think that his mere presence has given the, the alums hope that it can be done. Greg, right here, they have taken this second half kickoff. This is the 12th play of the drive for Pitt. Look in pass. Green holds on at the five-yard line. That is a heck of an effort by Junior Green, and it is first and goal for the Pitt Panthers. Curtis Trivett was there on the cover, but that ball was thrown so nicely, really hard to knock it down. With Dietrich Gels out, this is the guy that's had to come forward, the favorite receiver here, Green. Look at the reach out. Hold on. Beautiful catch. First and goal from the five. time it may have been Swinger who jumped across. Let's see if he was drawn off. <laughs> I love it. Ball. Offside on the defense. <laughs> Don't you like to see big defensive linemen and offensive linemen plead their case on the field? It was him. No, I wasn't. <laughs> Reuben Brown has been very animated. Swinger this time saying, oh man, come on. I'm going to catch grief in the, in the defensive film meeting next week. Look at this. 12 plays, 73 yards, 5 minutes and 49 seconds. Probably most important. All right, Billy West. Left side, Rebel, touchdown Pittsburgh. Christophic, Reuben Brown, Lawson Mollica. Mollica particularly with a paving block. And a little bit of a smile from the head coach on the sideline as his football team took the second half kickoff and used up Fred just over six minutes. Power football, nothing surprising about this. We're going to come off and hit you. Can you get past me? Defense can't. Offensive linemen push their men into the end zone. gets it and will take a break. Eight minutes, 52 seconds left in the third quarter. Our new score is Pitt 21, Rutgers 3. Evening, particularly if you're a Pitt fan, it's not a nice evening if you're one of the Rutgers faithful. In fact, it's, it's just been one of those nights where it seems like everything you touch turns the wrong color. It's just going the other direction. We still have a lot of football time left with the uh, 8.52 showing here in the third. But the point is, <laughs> you got to get it started here pretty soon because now they're down 21 to 3. And Pitt has to be gaining confidence with every possession, both offensively and defensively. Uh, the defensive line has really gained a lot of confidence. And for Coach Graber, he knows that he's got a cold quarterback. And his quarterback has had to sit on the sidelines for a long time yep. after halftime. Yep. Johnny Majors uh, pacing. He's looking up at the clock thinking, I wonder if that, that thing has a fast forward. <laughs> huh? You think he ain't fired up? <laughs> Swinging his arm. Little pooch kick. They're not going to take a chance on Willis. So this is Bill Bailey. Bailey takes it across the 30 to the 35-yard line. So you see, 
Pittsburgh there. Let's go down to, uh, to Dr. Punch. Jerry? Gentlemen, without a doubt, Curtis Martin is the heart and soul of the Pittsburgh offense. So he's not here tonight. He's back home in Pittsburgh. So at halftime, we decided to give him a call and find out exactly what his thoughts were in watching the first half. Okay, we'll uh, we'll come back to that. We've we've got this uh, recorded at halftime, and we'll get back to that in just a moment. As uh, number one, Ray Lucas has come back in at quarterback, the sophomore out of Harrison, New Jersey. Quick out pass, gets it to Brantley. One on one situation. He's going to wind up with five. Now let uh, let's go back, and here's that interview that we got with Curtis at halftime. Curtis, the odds maker said that Pitt would struggle in the first half, but uh, it hasn't been the case. Uh, what's your assessment of the game thus far? Well, I think the team's coming out. You know, they're playing, they're executing. You know, with the passes, they're doing good in the running game. And I think they're uh, coming out trying to win this one. You know, do good. We've been rebuilding on each week, and I think this is the game that we want to put it all together and get a victory on. It. If you could speak to Billy West, the young freshman running back who's taking your place tonight, what advice would you give him here at halftime? Well, I think the most important thing for Billy West uh, right now would be ball security to hold on to the ball, you know, going up through the hole, because I don't think we could afford any fumbles or any turnovers right now at this point in the game. What exactly is your injury, uh, Curtis, uh, and when do you expect to get back? Actually, I'm not too sure about the injury. Uh, the doctors will look at my x-rays and my MRI results when they get back off the uh, trip to Rutgers. But uh, I'm not too sure about what it is, but I'm pretty sure I'll be back by next week against Miami. Curtis, thanks for joining us, and best of luck to you down the road. Okay, thank you. Okay, Jerry, thanks so much. Youngster has over 800 yards on the season. And again, it's one of those situations where you have to wonder, had this game been played on Saturday rather than on Thursday, and it was rescheduled, uh, you have to wonder if he might not have been ready to go. You know, so many times during the season, you'll, you'll find yourself on Tuesday and Wednesday saying, I don't know how I'm going to be able to play. All of a sudden, Thursday rolls around, and you, you start to feel a little bit better, and Friday may get a little adrenaline, starting to feel better. Well, 42% of the offensive plays is what he handles and scores 36% of their points. So, obviously, he has missed, and we appreciate the visit. And uh, as Jerry said, we, we say speedy recovery. Hope things go well for you. Lucas on top. Good heavens. He threw this one back over to West Rutherford. 50 yards in the air. And let's go back to Dr. Punch. Jerry? Gentlemen, at halftime, Rutgers coach Doug Graber was very concerned. So, hey, guys, we embarrassed ourselves in the first half. The quarterback's lack of practice painfully apparent. Our offense totally out of sync. He said in the second half, we've got to be enthusiastic. They plan to throw the ball upfield. So they're playing us so tight, we're going to throw the ball downfield, loosen them up a little bit in the secondary, and then we can run the ball back up there. You know, Dr. Punch, last year Pitt was losing and missing the enthusiasm. It looks tonight as though they have it. Rutgers just absent. There's a reverse with Brantley. A little picket fence out there, but a good job of adjusting. They're going to be knocked out of bounds at the 41-yard line. That's Maurice Williams who read it and came back over to make the tackle, but that's going to be enough for a Rutgers first down. And now the Scarlet Knights put back-to-back -back first downs together. I told you earlier that I just do not like reverses that take a long time to develop, but the way they block this one here, I like it a little bit. You kick out on the outside linebacker and let the runner get inside, and it's a good deal, but I, it still takes a long time, and if anybody from the inside beats your guard or center, then you're beat. It goes back to that thing I mentioned with the penetration. Yeah. Once it happens, it's over. Now you see the numbers of what the run offense normally is and what it is tonight. Straight ahead with Willis. Tries to bounce off the tackle, but Doug Whaley came up and finished him off as he tried to spin out of the tackle. Gerald Simpson was there to hit him first. So Rutgers uh, struggling offensively, but now back-to-back -back first downs. We'll see if they can come up with points. The one thing that a coach tries to tell a kid, and he doesn't always get through to him, is the fact that Pitt's been kicked around this year. They've been kicked around physically and also mentally. A lot of verbal abuse from the media and what have you. The kids get tired of that. And there's some decent kids out there, and they're showing it tonight. Pressure is on. Going to run out of it. If he turns the corner, there's a lot of green space. At the 10-5, touchdown. Ray Lucas, 40 yards. I don't 
think anybody would have believed you if you had told them coming into the ball game tonight that it would be 6:25 left in the third before Rutgers got their first touchdown. But that's exactly what it is. But the point is, they did three consecutive first downs, and now we'll see if uh, if Ole Mo switches over to the folks wearing scarlet. Benestad with the extra point, and he's got it. So let's take a break. 6.25 left third quarter, new score. Hit 21, Rutgers 10. Who just engineered that, uh, that offensive drive. And here's what happened on the play that he scored 40 yards. They came with an outside pressure. And when you come from the outside, you better make sure that everybody stays in their running lanes. Most quarterbacks would have gone down. Instead, Lucas, with his athletic ability, got to the outside and has just uh, too much speed for the inside people to catch up with him. And then watch downfield. Brantley, number 12, the wide receiver, he has the touchdown saving block right there. That got Lucas to the end zone. And that kind of ability is what the Rutgers coaches look for when they are called. Lucas with his running ability, sometimes Forte comes off and he throws and gets them to the end zone. Oh, don't forget uh, at the end of the ball game tonight as you look at the Rutgers uh, drive, seven plays, 65 yards, 227, five runs and two passes, and a 40-yard run. That's the fourth touchdown scored by Lucas this year. We'll be selecting the Wrangler player of the game at the end of the contest tonight. Remember, we talk about the youth on Pitt's team. This is where you need experience right here. The, the veterans that would say, guys, I told you, it's still a football game. This is Mosley, and he'll be stopped before the 25. Mosley, Now, let's see. Rutgers to Virginia Tech. Halftime score, 35 to 7. <laughs> then they come back in the second half and do their own version. And Virginia Tech is a good team. They are. 8 of 10, 109 yards. For Ryan. It's the pitch. Felicio, and he's going to be hit and dropped at the line of scrimmage. No time to panic. Plenty a football time left but I, I really think a first down right here is really important because free and out and the offense comes back on the field and they're warm and excited and pumped up I don't think that's that would be a good thing to add to the menu right now if you're if you're pit and John Ryan is hot throwing the football I'd go back and let him do it again eight of ten 109 yards let him throw the pill the pocket goes deep and it's overthrown he was looking for Skaraki his tight end way down at the 40 yard line well NCAA basketball's first practice session John Saunders going to host the 60 minute show Larry Conley will be at the University of Kentucky Dick Vitale will be at North Carolina Bill Raftery will be at the University of Massachusetts and a scholarship is going to be given to the first student at each of the three sites who makes a half court shot that is midnight madness tomorrow evening that ought to be fun I like the, I like the shooters chances that don't go to the fraternity parties before the contest <laughs> They want to throw it. They get it away, and there's nobody there. Well, Skaraki, I think, is a man that he wanted to throw it to. That's a difficult situation for a halfback to, to throw back into the short side of the field. Especially when the pursuit is coming on. Nate Cochran. He had a very good first half. You see his numbers as long as 46. Taking away to Brantley. Flag comes down. And Brantley with an opportunity to return from the 35. At midfield. Takes a pretty good shot at the 45. And now let's check the penalty flag, which was thrown back at the line of scrimmage. 40 yards and a kick and 20 on the return. Procedure on the kicking team 
All players are not inside the nine yard mark. I decline that. Yeah. I agree, Graver. Yeah. Yeah, with this with a 20 yard return and you got the ball across midfield. Well, it's getting a little chillier here. So you can see some of the folks brought blankets and they're very pleased they did. So let's take a timeout. 517 left of the third quarter. Pitt 21 and Rutgers 10. Why watch life on TV when you can live it? 21 to 10, our score, Ron Franklin, Craig James, and Dr. Jerry Punch. Thursday evening, CFA football from the Meadowlands. And with five minutes and 17 seconds left to play in the third quarter, it's now Pitt 21 and Rutgers 10. And it was 21 to 3 just a couple of moments ago, and all of a sudden, Rutgers with a very big touchdown drive, Lucas running 40 on a keep. And we'll see if that momentum carries over here for the Scarlet Knights. Presley's going to throw. Brantley almost came back underneath it at the five-yard line. So both coaches go into their bag of tricks here in the third quarter. And Presley's thrown a touchdown pass this season, so he knows he can throw the ball, and that's something that Pitt has to be worried about. What this does, though, outside of it being an incompletion, is it takes some of the pressure off the pursuit from the free safety in the corner. They got to stay back. One less guy to block. Brantley almost did an excellent job of adjusting to the ball. <laughs> Running underneath. He sure yeah. did. And if you wondered on that the replay, as you look at Presley in the sideline, why the head coach was grabbing a youngster <laughs> in a jacket. The reason he's got on the dark jacket, he's signaling in the play so that he stands out. He was just telling him what to run. This is it. Complete. At the 37-yard line, Eddie Walker this time. 18 yards and now all of a sudden it's like this offensive machine that scores 40 points a ball game has uh, awakened well you've got lucas now that is, has scared the defense they know that he can run the football so whenever he gets around in the corner that secondary they're not quite sure do you come up and stop the run or do i stay back and cover deep and that's what had the big void for you right there in the middle beautiful execution and a wonderful throw maybe the best throw we've seen tonight from them Craig, this is one of the things that's happened with miami with a change of quarterbacks down there he creates the same kind of situation loses the football on the ground and recovered by C. Graves and the Panthers pour some water on what was getting to be a hotter fire for the moment. As I've heard you say a lot of times, good Lord. <laughs> it was Hosselick that that made the hit and caused the fumble. Well, you live by the gamble and you die by it, but this time Pitt, they came with the blitz, put enough pressure on him, and had he been able to hold on to the football, it could have been big. Seagraves comes up with a huge recovery for Pitt. Trying to maintain his balance, and you could see he hit his knee. The ball came loose after Hosley tripped him up. Lakeo. He'll go for a couple. You gotta play reach for and it's gonna be bootleg. Don't come inside. We were setting her in line. Stay outside. You can't go inside them because the, the blitz is gonna force the ball to you. All right? That's where you get the turnover, guys. Good job. He's right talking now. about the technique. Exactly. Now I know why there's not a lot of Texas players on Pitt's team. See, you, you, we, we wouldn't understand that. Because <laughs> we got a bad accent, you see. <laughs> Colicchio shaken up on the play. Walking off on his own, but uh, the numbers continue to dwindle there. Of course, Billy West, and as we mentioned, Chad Dukes also can play tailback for them. Good, good point. Wouldn't be surprised at all to see him jump back there. By the way, 11 carries for 33 for him tonight. Ryan goes on top, and he's got Green down there. Ball tipped. And now here comes a flag down. Ball was just, it started to flutter. He had him beaten and he had to slow down and come back. And from the reaction from Rutgers, it's going to be against the Scarlet Knights. 
Big question whether or not Bowman played the ball if he was playing receiver or not. Pass interference on the offense. Whoa. Well, the Rutgers players did not do a good job of the, <laughs> the way they were reacting. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You see him push with that right hand. He kind of pushed him back. Bowman was trying to go for the ball in the right hand. Green just reached out there, and that's, that's when they called it. Well, two redshirt freshman cornerbacks. Roberts and Fullman tonight. And that was Bellamy and Fullman who were on that play, but they have combined for four of the team's eight interceptions. And you mentioned the word Bellamy. He's kind of the glue keeping those young guys together back there, the old Wiley veteran. This is the first penalty against Pitt tonight. Well, they did have one other, but it was refused. And this is Billy West who will take it out to the 34. Jamil Jackson is is there to grab it. Kiko's uh, ankle. Is what and Jerry, if you can, if you're right there, if you can describe what's happening. That's junior running back Tim Colicchio. Now he just suffered a hip pointer last week against West Virginia, but that's Freddie Fu, who is the orthopedic surgeon, along with uh, some of the trainers here, examining the left ankle. Colicchio says the ankle popped when he went down, so they're examining here. We'll get more upstairs in just a moment. Okay. Ryan going to go on top again, looking for Junior Green. Just over his hands. Michael Roberts is the man who had to cover. You got to figure Colicchio with that, hearing that pop in his mind. He knows now that that if he is able to go back in the game, he's he your mentally favorite. And you're almost washed up from that point on. Three minutes and 21 seconds left in the third as Cochran comes on again. 21 to 10. Pitt leading. Ooh. Another good coverage kick. Bradley retreats all the way to the 12-yard line. Gets by one. Gets by two and now suckers in as a flag comes down. But they did maintain coverage to the wide side of the field. And let's see what the marker is. That's 53 yards on a kick and nine on the return. A long nine. Cochran really has been a big part of this ball game as far as... Illegal block in the back, above the waist, on the return. Cochran has been a very big part of what has happened good to Pittsburgh tonight, particularly with field position that he kept uh, the Scarlet Knights backed up with in that first half, Greg. It just adds to the defense. If you've got a young, inexperienced defense and a team that's trying to play above their heads tonight to hold down a great rushing team, the further you make them move, the better your chances. Matt Cavanaugh, former quarterback at Pitt, down on the down on the sideline, talking with uh, with some of the players. Ryan, right there. Matt used to be my landlord. I, he'd move out and go to San Francisco when I was playing in New England. I'd just move into his house. We'd stay there. He'd come home. His, see, his seasons were a little longer than ours. <laughs> I never had a holdover. <laughs> well, trying to return to some of those days that they had, like uh, when, when Kavanaugh played there. and Simpson with him and he'll take it to the 20. Now here's the scoring summary so far in this ball game in case you joined us late. It was uh, Rutgers striking first. Minnesota with a 42-yard field goal and then here came Pitt. Billy West, a five-yard touchdown run. That's with 222 left in the first. And they were not done. They got another touchdown in the first half. Junior Green on the three-yard reception and then 21 to three Pitt. Billy West has a hurdling run. And then Rutgers just came back. Ray Lucas couldn't find anybody open, and he scrambled for 40. As you look at Presley, boy, he gets hit by Tumblefin. <laughs> Tommy loves that. <laughs> I went in and talked with him last night at dinner, and he almost looks like he's shaking himself up a little bit. He kind of... Well, if you hit somebody that hard, something's going to hurt. That's worth two ice bags tomorrow. 
so Tommy, you, you you really had the reputation. He said that's the only. I just that, I don't know. It's just the way I know how to play. But they can see a little grimace. But you won't get him close to the sideline. He'll just keep on coming. And he'll forget all about it. When they snap this football, he's going 100 percent. Tumulty is there to make the stop again. Yeah, those old linebackers, there he is. He's on the bottom of the pile, and he'll probably drag himself up again, and he's going to grimace a little more of a little, little aspartame. Look at the man. He's right here. This is a football player. This is your John Madden player for Pitt right now. You see him. He's got the bad shoulder. The bad arm hurt the play before. Boom. He's on the tackle. And now he does come out of the ball game. They, uh, in fact, Coach Majors was the first man over to give him a pat on the shoulder as a Reardon is in the ball game. And they're just the trainers talking to him right now. Presley straight up the middle, 5, 10, 15, 20, and he breaks it open. One man to beat, Maurice Williams, and tackled inside the 15. Tumulty was, and they brought him out of the ball game for one play. An excellent point that you're making there, Ron. You take out your star player on defense in the middle. If you look in here, here's where your triangle is, where they're going to try to attack in here. Presley, knowing there's nobody there, look at the blocking. Trap blocked by the half. The what a beautiful fullback block that gets into the clearing. And then Presley, he's a good runner. He's not the 4-2-8 that Willis is. He just ran out of gas. They spread out. Try to put him on the corner with the pressure, and he will go down. Lucas finally corralled by Tom Barnes. And very quickly, Tumble T, number 84, back in the ballgame. You're not good enough at Pitt right now to lose your star player and not be, not be impacted. over to the sideline to get the defensive call and then uh, make it to his defensive teammates. Could be the last play of the third quarter. 21 to 10 pit and Rutgers knocking on the door again. Ball complete. Mario Henry inside the 10 and that'll do it. Last play of the third quarter. So let's stand by for a break. As we head to the final 15 minutes, uh, this game all of a sudden has awakened. 21 to 10. Pitt. It's 21 to 10, our score. And the final 15 minutes about to come. And here you see Felicchio is being carted off the field and taken to the locker room. So 11 carries, 33 yards. And Jerry Punch, can you put a period on uh, his evening? Well, Kalikiel, they palpated it to not determine that they had any obvious fracture. They're going to take him in an x-ray, and we'll get an update from Freddie Fu in just a moment, Ron. Back okay. up there. Bruce Presley is the only setback with Lucas. Lucas hit, gets away, and here he goes. Finally gets it back to the line of scrimmage. Barnes will finish him off, maybe a gain of one. You know, Pittsburgh just seems to have done a much better job in that shotgun formation. It's almost like that Rutgers had more success when they took it from under center. I think it gives a little bit more of a, a threat. At least tonight, the percentages have been real high. Shotgun, throw the football, under center, you hand it off. And they don't quite come with the ears tucked back as much when they're under center. Forte will hold, and uh, now I think they're changing footballs for Benison. 29-yard attempt. Trying to cut it to an eight-point ball game. Remember the field goal he missed earlier? He hit the upright. Wide right. So let's take another look. Got to wonder about that hole. Kickers are mentally really particular about how they get it. Looked like a good one. Looked good there. Yeah. Sure did. Nothing wrong with that. 
Yeah, he just barely misses it to the right, so we'll take a break. 14-16 left of the ball game. Pitt still on top. There we were, a jillion miles outside of the hood. The buck got a flat, got no check. Somebody's got to cut his grass. What's up? Four and a half. 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 Six and a half. Sold. The man's round fell. But he's got no beef. Pardon me. That was that. Yo, MC Cal Seller. Texaco has developed Haviland Formula 3 motor oil with not one but three kinds of protection against heat stress, starting friction, and engine dirt. Haviland Formula 3. Add more life to your car. You've never seen a camcorder like the Sharp ViewCam. The viewfinder gone. Replaced with this LCD view screen. You're right in the action. Gretzky scores? Let's score the replay. Then, play it back instantly with color and sound. Want to see that again? The Sharp View Cam. An absolute original. So your first goal, Ty. And birthdays, graduations, your wedding, your kids, my grandchildren? ESPN's Thursday Night CFA Football is brought to you by MCI Friends Around the World. And by the new Sharp View Cam, an absolute original. Call 1-800-B-SHARP for more information. So Rutgers misses just an excellent opportunity to come away with points. And now that six possible points, potential points, that have been missed on field goal attempts. Quick handoff. And this time they're looking for the fullback and he's going to be stopped for no gain. Now, Chad Dukes has hit him a couple of times with that on the quick popper, but the Sneedon was there to uh, to make sure it didn't go anywhere. Dukes had some nice runs last week with uh, the ball game West Virginia. I think he had over 100 yards, and you really, you have to understand that Rutgers defensive coaches know that that's there. That nose guard and the tackles and the ends, they got to make sure they stay at home. They can't go running out of there, protect the middle. As he is being hit, and I'm telling you, if that thing is picked off, it's a, it's a walk in the park into the end zone. Sneedon was the guy who was there. Yeah, this guy here is getting pounded on pretty good. And, and, and as you say, two more yards in distance of that pass, Whoa. and we've got, uh, we don't have to worry about a missed field goal. You got six points. Good heavens, just, you know, for free. To elaborate a little bit more on that point with Dukes and, and the fullback, if they had Curtis Martin, they'd have the dual threat inside-outside. They're really handcuffed and one-dimensional right now. Ryan is 8 of 13 for 109 yards, but he's missed his last three. Going up on top of this with nobody home, and it was dropped for the defensive back, but I'm not... I think Roberts was out of bounds. I don't think it would have been an interception. But... Not a very good series for Pitt. They started off the third quarter and drove the ball for just over six minutes to score the touchdown. And just as importantly, it didn't take. It took less than a minute off the clock. I mean, it, which Rutgers needs right now is time. This time, uh, no spiral. Fair catch at the 41. 39 yards and a kick and nothing on the return. Next Thursday, 740, the weekend kickoff show begins. That's how you can start your week for college football. And then immediately following that, 8 o'clock Eastern time from the Astrodome in Houston, it's the Texas Longhorns against the Cougars of the University of Houston. All next Thursday, beginning your college football week right here on ESPN. <laughs> yeah, on the bottom left, getting an early jump on Halloween. Uh, I hope it's not as here. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas deep in the pocket. 
pass tipped, and Tumulty was parallel to the ground trying to make the interception. And impressively, it came off his hands. Second down and ten. It almost appears that, that Lucas needs to get a little further around the corner before he throws. Trying to get his shoulders squared up. Trying to throw, it, you know, it just, it's a real gamble. It wasn't even brought, blocked properly. So you had, had he caught the ball, it was a, a, you know, gamble as to whether or not he'd gotten any yardage. The only setback, and they sent him about eight yards deep. And you could see that good, quick first step that he has. As Tumulty is there to make the tackle. Out on the sideline, Forte has to look on. He started the ball game at quarterback tonight and now has given way to his friend, Ray Lucas. And, you know, Craig, this is a tough situation, but these two youngsters, uh, they were out getting a late evening snack night before last. We visited with them yesterday, and they really have become tremendously good friends. Stan Paris said that whenever one's on the sideline, their jaw's on the turf. They hate being over there. It, they're such competitors. That's right. They're 4 of 12. And third down conversions. Battaglia makes the reception. And they're now 5 of 13. Stepped up. He threw the ball with authority. These guys can throw the football. It's just a, it just appears that at times, and I can say this for all three quarterbacks that have played tonight, they just don't appear to really set up and have confidence in their pass protection to throw the ball. Back foot, plants, lets it go on time. Steps deep in the pocket. He's got a man wide open, Bradley tagged inside the 20 by Sumner, but it is a first and 10, and here comes Rutgers again. 24 yards on that one. Brantley is the man that they must find. He's the big play guy with the receiving core. You see Brantley, he'll go up the field. You got the zone. He's got to find the pocket. It's out to the outside. The corner was drawn up by the underneath pattern. Free safety couldn't get over to make the play. Really a strong arm that Lucas possesses to get the ball down there like he did. Brantley now four catches for 38 yards. Willis in the ball game. Lucas scrambling, throws this one, just throws it away. Well, a moment ago, I talked about the friendship between Forte and Lucas. I asked Ray about that yesterday in an interview. The fact that we're really good friends and we have, you know, the utmost respect for each other makes it a lot easier for me to start and Brian to come in second or for him to start and me to go in second. Know that both of us, if you know, someone's in trouble, Brian's going to be there to get me out of it. I know that. I feel comfortable that way. So if Coach Pratt says to me, you know, hey, Brian's starting. I'm like, okay. You know, and then I know, you know, it's fine with me. Now, they're, they're two very impressive, very bright young men, and the, and the coaches are fortunate that they feel that way. But as you said, they are competitors. Here's Willis, hit in the backfield, tried to cut it back inside, and it's Tumulty who was holding on to him for dear life, and he's going to lose about a half yard. You know, the, the one thing, and you talk to the, to the coaches about Tumblety, and they really, they love his abilities and his hustle and everything. Probably the thing that they will get him to work on most during the offseason is, now he's not a flyer by any means, but to pick up an extra step of speed because he has such great instincts. He really gets to the football quickly. And with, and with today's techniques, running techniques, you can increase and improve your speed if you work and work smart. By the way, Willis, since the first quarter, has only picked up 20 yards. Lucas loses the football. It's on the ground, and Pitt has recovered at the 25, and it's Doug Whaley. Bart is the man who made the hit and caused it to come loose. Maybe there's something in that Halloween move. Well, it's not in the cards for Rutgers. I mean, at four turnovers, you just, you can't overcome those kind of odds. And and Lucas, once he breaks, now, if, from time to time when you step up in there, Willis was out to the flat by himself. You've got to tuck the football away. You've got to be smart. It, there's a complete package that goes along with a scrambling quarterback. You've got to understand where you are. Well, that's, that's a great point because it's cost him a couple of times tonight. That pass overthrown. Junior Green is the man that he wanted. Junior probably is going to come back to the huddle and say, 
when we throw that route, uh, don't make me jump because I'm already vulnerable. My question right now is why would Pitt be throwing? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, well, you stopped the clock. They were three and out on the last one. I was going to ask you the question. Well, maybe you tell me. But Curtis Martin sitting at home watching the game, that's one big reason. They don't have to. Licchio, we've seen him leave with an ankle injury. go down so he will stop the clock as he comes out of bounds it's Bellamy and let's check in with Dr. Jerry Punch again Jerry what do you have for us we caught up with Pitt AD Oval James on the sidelines and Oval uh, a lot of speculation about the future of Pitt athletics and some of the facilities and uh, there has been no announcement until tonight well Jerry uh, we've been meeting in, in Pittsburgh with the planning committee and uh, uh, we're we're making some plans to upgrade our facilities at Pitt and something that's badly needed uh, a convocation center is online, and we hope to do some renovations in a, an old pit stadium. But uh, I think it's a, a place that can we can fix up, and it'll be great for our young men to, to come and, and see our facilities. So we're looking forward to it. A couple of yard game there for Pittsburgh. And, you know, you we talked about the fact that you've been on the phone today with Chancellor O'Connor. It's, it's been a while coming, but you want to update the facility to stay up with the Big East, but a lot of excitement there with Johnny Majors coming back to Pitt. Well, you know, I, there's no question that Coach Majors put together a great staff. We've got to have some great facilities for him to recruit to, as well as our other programs. So uh, we're excited. It's a great day for Pitt, and, uh, uh, you know, our planning committee can get together. We're working on plans, so hopefully we'll have it done here before too long. Noble, thanks for joining us. Thanks very much, Eric. Trey here. Can Billy West get it done? Yeah, he turns the corner, has the first down, plus about four more yards. Bellamy comes up to trip him up. Last night in the interview with with uh, with uh, Johnny Majors, I asked him about recruiting, and he said that the acceptance that they have gotten from the kids as far as just being really interested in talking about Pitt and, and saying yeah, we want to come to school there has even surprised him. And that, uh, you know, he he's excited See, the number of players that Pitt has, you can have 88. That's what's allowed. They only have 60 players available to them right now. Now, they can't go out and sign 28 because the limit's 25, but they got a lot of holes that can be filled, and they need some major acceptance right now. I think it's a real credit to Johnny Majors and his respect from players and parents to allow them to come in because... It, he is recruiting in fairly with a, with a complex that's outdated. They need to upgrade the facilities. He's done a lot of lobbying personally to get those facilities, to get the money. That's why I said earlier that the alums are excited at Pitt, which is important. They've got to donate the money. They've got to give and help them out. And in just a few minutes, uh, as this quarter rolls on here, they're going to show you what they're doing up at Rutgers. Here, here are two ball clubs and two universities that are, again, taking another step up as far as upgrading. We've got a great facility that they're building up at Rutgers. We'll show it to you in just a bit. In fact, yesterday we... Well, this is a look at the old grounds. And now, this is what has happened. Looks like a few grenades later. <laughs> but this is a look at the hole that has been dug. And now, what has happened here? The steel has gone up for the upper deck. This is going to have this, it'll have a covered area all the way around through the bowl in and will be open on one end of the stadium. In fact, it's going to remind you a lot of, of the stadium down at Chapel Hill because of the trees around the stadium and everything. It's going to be a really nice facility, and I know Doug Graber and them are excited about getting that thing completed. Ball is fumbled in the air, and Rutgers say they have it. It has been recovered by Spells, number 97. Keep Brian in on that action, too. And one thing about West, he runs hard. Reminds me a little bit of watching Curtis Martin with the way they throw their body into people. But with that extra effort, just like Ray Lucas while ago, comes the ability for defenses to get the football away from you. You see the recovery. And, you know, this team, Rutgers, is so used to coming back. Hang in there. We got a ball game. We'll be right back. Thomas, number 56, coming over to pat west on the head and say you know shake it off uh, but you remember the interview that dr punch had with curtis martin at halftime his advice to billy west hold on to the football here's lucas scrambling for his life gets one pickup block gonna have five yards and he'll step out of bounds he picks up seven 
as uh, Tumulty had to come all the way across the field and force him out of bounds. Now, we've just gone under eight minutes left to play in the ballgame. And you say, well, Pitt is down, or Pitt is leading by 11 points in the ballgame. As quickly as Rutgers can get into the end zone, you know, I, I'm not sure they really, they don't need to throw every down necessarily because they can pick up huge chunks by running the football. You just saw Presley on the series before, had took off on the long jaunt. Uh, it, there's no question Lucas can take off. He's had the 40-yard touchdown run. This pass complete to Battaglia, the tight end, and he'll have the first down at the 40-yard line. Gerald Simpson made the tackle. Obviously, they don't agree with us, so they're going to throw the football a little bit. But throw the conservative underneath yeah. pattern. Don't gamble throwing the ball to Hill Mary downfield unless it's there. And one thing I'd really like to see Lucas do is when he breaks the pocket and scrambles to look downfield and have vision to see the receivers because you know somebody's going to be open. Here's the running play they toss in and Willis, boy, he gets tagged at the line of scrimmage and it's John McCray. He not only stayed at home, I mean, he really attacked him. <laughs> there's, uh, you know, and there's a situation where, you know, Rutgers mixing it up, trying to get Pitt to, to think pass, and uh, defensively, they, they dialed the right number, did they? Oh, and seldom do you find, well, you, when you find in the good runners, they attack the defenders, and that's exactly what happened. Boom! That's a lot of load that you're sticking your head in there to stop. He got, got a little stinger himself, maybe. Singing do da do da. Quick pass has it complete. Italian still fighting. He's down to the 30-yard line. Now that is very close to a Rutgers first down. Tumulty is there on the play again. Boy, is Tumulty all over the place. He, he runs. He's chasing Lucas, scrambling. He's making tackles. He's falling back and. He's supporting the run. He's, he's on his way to uh, a pretty good night. Willis. Look at that quick cut back and he takes it inside the 25. The coaches hollering for the offense to get up and get the ball snapped, get it called, and get back to the line of scrimmage. Pitt's defense wouldn't be surprised to see him come from the outside off the corner with the linebackers. Try to get to the pinching effect on Lucas so that if he does scramble, if you don't get to him, it's got to be up the middle and keep the two tackles at home. Quick pass. Bradley has it. It's only because of the good open field tackle. He thought he was going to pick up extra yardage, but it was Sumner who made the one-on-one. -on -one. And that'll move the chains again. Now we've just gone under six minutes left to play. Pitt 21, Rutgers 10. Clock will become a factor because we have seen Pitt with the ability to run the football and have some long sustaining drives. Willis right up the middle. Going to be hit and shoved back, and it's Allopin who is right there. And now the timeout has been called by Rutgers. So we'll take it with a 534 left of the ball game. Only five minutes and 34 seconds left in the ball game. Rutgers still has two timeouts left. Ball at the 16 yard line. It is second down. Threw him. Oh, good heaven. Eddie Walker not only had broken free. And he was open. Oh, I'm telling you. You know, that, that's where Forte usually is a little better. He has a better pass on he that. He does a better job of putting air under the ball and letting uh, the wide receiver run under it. Well, uh, you know, you're just going to say he's going to come up the field and give himself enough room from the outside. And, uh, and, and he had it. He had the man beat two or three yards. Flag is down. They throw the same route. You know, I'm looking at the field thinking, am I seeing a replay? <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> Wait a minute, Ron. They don't have it that big. There is a flag down at the 15. 
Pitt says it's against Syrac uh, against uh, the Scarlet Knights. Illegal procedure on the offense. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage. Well, that's a penalty that never before this season it started. <laughs> But last year, a lot, but uh, Craig, this year, every week, four, five, and six times. And it's because of all the, the shifting and changing players around and everything. But this is awfully late in the season. This is only the first one here, but last week in the Miami Syracuse game, we must have seen it almost a dozen times between the two teams. And that's inexcusable because from up here, it appeared to be the same play they just run. So yeah. how can't the guy go back to the same slot position that he was and get on the line? Fourth down. The line to make is the eight. <laughs> Lucas going to be hit and he's sacked by Tom Barton. Lucas just hasn't figured out yet how to control himself because he knows he can run with his legs. He obviously has more ability or more confidence in his ability to scramble and run. He knows the pressure's coming from the inside, but there are a lot of quarterbacks that we'll see, Ron, that, that they'll stand there, they know it's there, and let it go and take it for the team, but he throws it just right. But a running quarterback oftentimes says, oh, I'm breaking out of the jail. That's Billy Davis down at the bottom of the screen. They go with the running play, and Billy West will take it at right tackle for three as Keith Bryant is here to make the hit. And timeout called by Rutgers. Now they have one left as they stop it with 5.14 to play. Knowing that you're in a passing situation, Maybe you consider putting Forte in back in the game. You know, maybe maybe he's the guy that throws the ball down the field. Because I'd really be reluctant on Lucas. I, I'm, I'm afraid that he's going to want to run the ball instead of throwing it. And it's going to take a lot more time to run it down the field than it will throw it. Again, the other thing that, that we don't know is Forte has had the shoulder problems. Correct. He's gotten he's gotten cool now. He's been standing over on the sideline. You know, uh, mm -hmm. can, he, can he throw effectively? Correct. So, uh... Well, a lot of things that ha that have to be weighed. This would be a real big setback for Rutgers if they lose this game. Well, if you like college football, coming up on Saturday, this is the schedule here on ESPN. We'll start it off with Michigan against Wisconsin, 12.30 Eastern Time. Then, game number two, West Virginia at Syracuse, Saturday night, 7.30, and then we'll head to the Rose Bowl. Arizona against UCLA, all three games Saturday, right here on ESPN. West again, bounces off one tackler, then going to be knocked down by Swinger and Beckett. And timeout is called again by Rutgers, and that's going to be their last timeout. So we'll take it with a 5.09 left of the ball game, 21 to 10 pit. that when he gets back to Pittsburgh that Curtis will have a, a word of encouragement but also uh, a lesson in how to tuck the ball away. West again. Big opening up the middle. Has five. Has ten. Got it off at 16 yards. And let's go down to Dr. Jerry Punch. Jerry? Guys, what you're looking at is the latest technology to come along in sideline medicine. It's called the Zyscan, basically from Zytech in Windsor Locks, Connecticut. It is a portable fluoroscopy or x-ray machine. If you have a broken finger or a broken toe or foot, you simply put it underneath the machine here and take a look, and you can see that's my hand over there and my wedding band. X-ray, it shows you, honey, it's on my finger. But uh, you can see the bones inside my hand and see if you have a fracture. In case you want to buy one of these for your basement, uh, the modified module is just twenty-five grand, guys. Twenty-five thousand bucks. Twenty-five thousand. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you don't punch it. Don't put that thing away. There are a few guys on the crew. We might like to put it up to their head. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I could think of a lot of head coaches and assistant coaches that wouldn't have wanted that on the sidelines because you know how they used to be. You come to the sidelines and say, "Hey, man, I know I broke my hand." They say, "Hey, look." 
Put some tape, tape on it. it. It ain't broken. I can see it right now. <laughs> you know, they wouldn't want to be able to reveal the actual <laughs> break on the sideline. Well, that, that really takes all the mystery away, doesn't oh, yeah. it? Oh, yeah. Come here. I think I broke my finger. Well, let's go check it out. <laughs> that Graber, this is a ball game at... Uh, I have a feeling he's going to be trying to, to figure out late into the evening as West turns the corner, and now all of a sudden the redshirt freshman is beginning to feel his oats. Now let's see for the Scarlet Knights where they've got to go from here. At West Virginia, out at Miami, Oops. and then Syracuse. Don Neal's ball club very good football team and we were at Miami last week and I'll tell you what folks that's not a pleasant trip down there I like West Virginia I really yeah. like West Virginia the problem is Ryan Collins now has given Miami a little bit more potency I liked them last week and I know it's gonna be tough when they play hmm. under three minutes West again you know, Craig, you are running back, and what is it about as a game goes on, a good running back, it's like he lathers and he starts getting into the rhythm and he runs better in the third and fourth quarter maybe than he does in the first. You understand now, the first five or six carries in a ball game in that first quarter, you're thinking as you're running. And as you hit that 15, 20 carry level, all of a sudden, it's all 100% react. All of a sudden, you find yourself making moves that you, that, that you get up and you think, hey, how do I make that move? That's why it's important for all running backs to have the ball of 15 to 20 carry minimum. Well, now 17 carries. If your points will take it. 87 yards for Billy West. But the most important thing is he picks up the first down here. Rutgers has no more timeouts. And once they whistle this thing back in, there's only 2.05 left to play. And you can see Johnny Majors looking back up at that, uh, at that clock. And John may be saying, let's get another game on ESPN because they won the opening game down at Hattiesburg, Mississippi, as they surprised Southern Mississippi. And now they are well on their way, leading by 11 with under two minutes to play to upsetting Rutgers, who was a two-touchdown plus favorite. And helps in the old recruiting war, doesn't it? No, oh, does it ever. West turns the corner. Puts the head down and stays on the field to play, but they'll say he stepped out of bounds at the 10-yard line as Jay Bellamy came up to hit him. I mean, really, you find him picking the guy up off the ground. He is just, his dauber's in the dirt. He is tired, but he is reacting, and he's not worrying about getting hit anymore. He is just running people over. All of a sudden, it's fun. See, it's, it's just what you talked about. He's just gone over 100 yards, 18 carries for 101. Of course, he'll feel a little sluggish in the morning. And it has been recovered by Pitt at the five-yard line. West fumble recovered by Morris. Yeah, I think I'll probably, I mean, Majors and them, they realize this guy's tired, and he probably put somebody else in there so that he's, you know, relieved somewhat. But he still got the vision, a big hole. Put two hands on the football. When you leave the ground, you put your life in the defense's hands. That's right. It's uh, you're committed, and uh, Billy West going to come out of the game to a big ovation from his teammates, as as uh, Chad Dukes has come into the ball game, and he will be there at fullback. And now here comes the flag down. It looks like the the clock got him. Hey, on the offense. Hey, we got a flag down. So the players of the game tonight are for Rutgers, 11 carries, 94 yards for Bruce Presley at 8.5 average. He's the Wrangler player of the game for Rutgers. And on the other side of the field, we go to the defensive side of the ball. Tom Tumulty, 13 tackles, 10 solo, and one for a loss. The two Wrangler players of the game, and our congratulations to those two youngsters. George Watson. Tumulty on the sideline. 
And it's down to one knee for John Ryan, and they should have to do that maybe one more time, and this one will go in the books as Pitt is about to win their second game of the year. And let's go down and check in with Dr. Punch real quickly. Gentlemen, uh, more good news for Pittsburgh. Junior running back Tim Colicchio sitting behind the bench. X-rays are negative on his left ankle, a severe sprain, but nothing broken. He should be back possibly next week. That is good news because uh, with Curtis Martin uncertain about next week, they will need the two runners. Down on one knee, and this one is history. The Pitt Panthers begin their celebration as they head to the locker room here at the Meadowlands, and they have won their second football game of the year as they have upset Rutgers' final score tonight, 21 to 10. For Craig James and Dr. Jerry Punch, Ron Franklin is saying so long, and thanks everybody for joining us tonight from the Meadowlands. Again, the final score, Pitt 21 and Rutgers 10. Stay tuned.